If you're scheduling a meeting with multiple attendees, there's a lot of ways you can go about it. The most obvious way is just to email them or give them a phone call and say, hey, tell me your best dates and times. And then after you go back and forth quite a bit, you finally find the date and time that fits everyone's schedule. But there's a better way and a much more efficient way to do this using Outlook. So in this tutorial, we're going to go over a feature in Outlook called the new meeting request. So I'm going to start by going to calendar. And, you know, I can go as per usual and find a date and time and just click an appointment and create an appointment that way. But in this case, I don't know when people are available. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use the new meeting request feature. So I'll click new meeting at the top. And I'm going to enter my attendees here. So Ryan Witt is one and JP Lavoie is another. Subject, technology, website, redesign. And the location is going to be our conference room. So the next thing that Outlook is asking me is, OK, well, what's the date and time for this meeting? And again, I don't really know their, their schedule at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at their schedule. So I'm going to click on scheduling. And what it's doing for me is it's actually showing me, me their busy times and their free times. It's not really showing me what's going on during that time, because I don't really need to know that. All I'm looking for is free time. So I'm going to go ahead and say, this meeting is probably going to be an hour. So let's go ahead and make that an hour there. And uh, it's showing me with the blue, it's showing me when, when people are busy and, and the white is free. So there's, there's different ways I can do this. I can go through and just kind of scroll and look for an hour that's available. Or I can let Outlook do that for me. So I can use this, this feature called Auto Pick Next. Now before I get into that, I will say that one of the things that I always do is I go under Options and make sure that Show Only My Work Hours is showing on this calendar because I don't want to have, have Outlook schedule a meeting for me at 8 p.m. So make sure that's checked under Options. And then when you've done that, go ahead and click on Auto Pick Next. So what it's going to do for you is it's going to go to the hour free times that it's seeing on the calendar. So it's saying 2.30 to 3.30 today is free. Yeah, that's a little soon. I want them to be able to prepare. So let's do uh, 8 o'clock meeting on a Monday. Probably not. But maybe 2 to 3. That's actually not that bad. So I think I'm going to stick with that appointment time. So what I'm going to do now that I've found the time and day, I'm going to get back to my appointment. And, you know, I can put a little uh, something in here. Let's chat about the redesign project, agenda to come, and then I can just send the request to them. So a few things happen when I said send this request. One is it's creating a meeting automatically on my schedule. So if I go down to Monday and I look, there's a meeting there. If I click on that, there's a few things that it's showing me. I can go to scheduling and again see their schedule there. And you can see that I actually have something on my schedule because that's the meeting. But another feature that I really like to use is tracking. So they just now got this remedy request, so they haven't accepted or rejected it yet. But the beauty is that it, it's when people start accepting or rejecting the meeting, I can go in and look at the different responses here. So let's take a look at something that actually already has some responses. So if I go to, let's say, for instance, this meeting, I can look and say tracking. And I can go through and see who's accepted and who hasn't. So it's kind of a nice way to see who's going to attend and you know who, who's, who's tentative and who's declined. Now what they're going to see, what the, what the attendees are going to see, um, is, is similar. So on their calendar, it may look something like this. So they may have a tentative date on their calendar. And you know it's tentative because it has this little bar beside the event. That means it hasn't been accepted yet. But another thing they're going to see is in their mailbox, they're going to get a, a meeting invite for this meeting. So let me go and find an example of that. Let's see here. This is one of the meetings that I've actually accepted. So JP sent me a meeting request earlier as a test. And what you see here is it's allowing me as an attendee to accept, to say maybe, or decline this meeting. It's even letting me propose a new meeting time if that doesn't work for me. So for attendees, it's nice because it's doing two things for them. It's giving them an email reminder, but it's also putting an event on their calendar. So again, it's putting a tentative event there until they've accepted or declined the event. So again, in summary, this is a really good way to keep up with things for yourself as a meeting organizer, but it's also really helping your, your attendees as well. You don't have to worry about them putting the wrong date and time in their calendar because you're sending out an invite to them that has all the relevant information for, for the event.